Hello everyone and welcome back to our reading of Lost Treasures. Today's chapter, The Riddle of the Buzzard. Oliver Le Vasseur, nicknamed Le Bouze, was born in Calais in 1690. When the buzzard was in his late teens, King Louis XV of France gave him permission to become a privateer. This meant that he could attack the ships of France's enemies so long as he agreed to share the captured treasure with his king. The buzzard soon broke his side of the bargain, and hoisting the Johnny Roger, became a pirate in the Indian Ocean. He seized vessels from all countries, including those belonging to France. Naturally, this enraged Louis XV, and in 1720 he offered a large reward for the buzzard's capture. In 1730, the buzzard was caught and sentenced to death by hanging. As he mounted the scaffold, he threw a roll of parchment to the crowds below, and with a loud laugh shouted, Find my treasure to him who can understand. On the parchment were twelve lines of writing in a code, as well as some numbers and diagrams. Here were the clues to the hoard of treasure, hidden by the buzzard on an island somewhere in the Indian Ocean. In 1756, the Seychelles Islands were taken over by a group of French people, among them the Save family. They began to farm land in the Bel Ombre area of the island of Mahe. In 1920, one of her descendants, a Mrs. Charles Save, noticed a curiously shaped rock poking out of the sea at low tide. Examining it closer, she found carved pictures of animals and a large eye on it. Intrigued by them, she asked some of her farm workers to dig beneath the rock to see if there was anything there. They discovered two coffins, each containing human bones and a pair of gold earrings, similar to those often worn by pirates. There was also an old pirate's cutlass next to the coffins. Many pirates used to come to the Seychelles in the 18th century in search of fresh fruit, drinking water, and timber to repair their ships. But was the buzzard one of them? Mrs. Save had already heard stories about him, and now decided to find out if they were true. In her research, she came across an old map printed in Portugal in 1729. On it, on the northwest side of Mahe, very close to her land, were the words, Owner of Land, the Buzzard. After making further inquiries, she also tracked down a copy of his roll of parchment. But try as she might, she could not decode the twelve lines of writing and the diagrams and numbers on it. So the location of the buzzard's treasure remained a mystery until 1949, when Reginald Herbert Cruz Wilkins arrived on Mahe. An English farmer and game hunter from Nairobi and Kenya, he came to the island to recover from an illness. He soon met Mrs. Save and learned about the roll of parchment and the strange carvings on the rock on the beach. Fascinated by what he was told, he returned to Kenya with a copy of what the buzzard had written in his pocket. He spent the next five months trying to unravel the mysterious words and diagrams. Bit by bit, he translated the first of the twelve lines of writing, revealing the words, a woman, waterlogged, dig at her feet. He was able to work out a few other words, and as a result, deduced that the buzzard was referring to the twelve labors of Hercules in Greek mythology and the constellations in the sky. He thought that the diagrams referred to bearings on a compass and distances. Full of excitement, he rushed back to the St. Charles to begin a search for the buzzard's treasure that was to occupy him for the rest of his life. On Mahe, Cruz Wilkins found his first clue. A flat, smooth stone with markings that looked like a compass points. He was convinced that there was a connection between the stone and the buzzard's diagrams. He paced out the distances 
given on the parchment, using the compass on the stone to give him the correct bearings. For several months, he dug holes in different places, but without any luck. Then he uncovered the stone statue on the beach. As he stared at it in amazement, sea water seeped slowly through the sand and around the figure. He had solved the first clue. He had found a woman waterlogged. Cruz Wilkins worked on the buzzard's parchment for the next 28 years and solved all but the final line of writing. Each line contained directions to a buried object and a stone with a carving, which were used to solve the next stage in the buzzard's puzzle. Eventually, after digging at many sites around the island, Cruz Wilkins ended up at a point very close to where he had found the buried statue of a woman. He was sure that the last line would provide him with the answer to where the treasure lay buried. Ill and penniless, after having spent all his savings in the search, Cruz Wilkins struggled on desperately trying to solve the final puzzle. He had discovered an underground cave with a carving on one of its walls of a sarcophagus with a mummy lying in it. He was convinced that the treasure lay near it, if only he could untangle the remaining few words. In 1977, he died before he was able to do it. With him went the information needed to solve the final clue to the mystery of the legendary treasure of Oliver Levasseur, the buzzard of the Indian Ocean. Well, how's that for a bit of a downer? So close and just like all that, uh, the treasure remains unfound. Maybe it will be one day. Maybe, maybe it actually has, and uh, we just don't know. I mean, this book was published in, uh, what, 89, 1990? Maybe it already has, who knows. Anyway, join me next time as we head out... Well... That will just be telling. I'll see you then.